Hello friends, I'm Mike Camp and today I'm going to take you through a project that I've been working on lately called Clouds and Edges. Um, it's a project that's been built on Cloudflare, um, Cloudflare workers and Cloudflare durable, durable objects. So if you're not familiar with Cloudflare workers, um, they are kind of similar to AWS Lambda or Google Functions, except that rather than running in a single data center, they are spread out all over the world at the edge so that they run very close to where your users are going to be calling them from, which makes them really quick. Um, so, and durable objects, um, I think are a really, really cool technology. Um, they're brand new from uh, Cloudflare and they're kind of, um, they're in beta, but I, I've been tinkering with them. That's, that's the whole reason for this project is so I can tinker with them. And they basically provide the stateful part of serverless. Um, that's the way I like to think of them. Um, which means that they allow you to have a, an object which persists in the cloud, in the void, um, that you can call from a worker um, and get the state back that you previously stored in there. Um, they kind of remind me a bit of the actor model, if you're familiar with that. Um, they're a little bit like that, but I think they're going to be really, really transformative in the architecture of multiplayer games specifically because um, it allows the game to remain serverless which is great for scale but it allows to have a certain persistence but before we go too deep into that um, let's keep going so um, oh, one one uh, example that they use to build um, uh, an example that they built to demonstrate uh, durable objects is they built doom uh, upon cloudflare workers which is pretty impressive a doom multiplayer so you've got the full uh, classic multiplayer experience of Doom running um, in the cloud in a serverless manner, which is very impressive to say the least. So um, I'll provide a link down in the comment in the uh, description so you can check that out. Anyway, back to the project. Okay, so um, I'm going to start off by just taking you through um, the functionality of the app. And then um, I'm going to give show you like a uh, a brief high level view of how uh, it works. And then if we've got time, I'll uh, take you through um, a, a simple example, um, end to end example. So this is Clouds and Edges. This is what you presented with when you first um, arrive here and you haven't um, used it before. So you just chuck in a name. Um, this would be like your normal sign up with like your email and password or whatever. But just for this example or for this um, project, it's just very, very simple. It hasn't really got any authentication. You just chuck your name in it. So let's put Mike in here and uh, click sign up. And here we are, we're taken straight to the user profile section. So we've got the user profile here, which is your name and an ID, uh, sign up button and um, a sidebar, which contains this section, which is your profile, the matches and admin. So we'll get to those in a second. Um, you can change your name. So Mikey C. Uh, and then, yeah, it's saved uh, in the cloud. So if I was to refresh, then you get that. So um, pretty simple, but it kind of allows me to just kick the tires and tinker and test with durable objects. So the next section is the matches. So this is a game um, uh, that's based upon a, a, a classic, well, pen and paper game called Dots and Boxes. If you're not familiar with it, it's a game for two players and more, but basically you just draw like a grid of dots on a piece of paper, and then you take it in turns to draw a line each, so in different colors. And if you, if the last person to uh, draw a line to, to complete a box gets that box, so you get a point. So it sounds pretty simple, and it is pretty simple, but you, it, lends, it lends itself to some pretty interesting strategies where you know you build up chains of these things, and you want to prevent somebody from um, you know finishing off the chain, and then you kind of like yeah, you do bits and pieces, and it, and it gets interesting towards the end of the game. But I thought it would be good to do rather than like a, a simple noughts and crosses. I wanted to do something a little bit different, but um, still kind of interesting. So. Um, yeah, so these are the matches. So you've got two different cards. You've got uh, my matches, which lists all the matches that you have active. Obviously, I've got none. And open matches. So these is because it's a multiplayer game. It's a last or list all the matches that are available. So we can click new match, and we can pick the size, what kind of size grid we want. Three by three, five by five, seven by seven. Now, for example, five by five, five by five. Create that, and then it creates um, your match here. And then we can uh, we can all we can do currently is uh, just cancel it. 
so it's cancelled yeah pretty simple really um but to obviously show demonstrate this we need uh, somebody else so let's create let's stick this on the side here and let's create a new person chuck them on the side here come on windows thank you uh, let's open up this url get rid of that bit chuck this in here right now we need to sign in here let's call this person righty righty tighty okay right so um, it's automatically assigned me a different um, emoji currently you can't change that but i'm just using that in place of what would be i suppose your uh your, your profile picture your avatar from google or wherever um, but it's just an emo uh, a random emoji that i i select when when you create the user so um well, there's no matches running so if we go to matches there's no open matches but if we create one here so we create it here and we go back to here uh when we click on it um, it refreshes and pulls down the the new match so then we can join it with this person so now it's created here we go back to here we'll see it's open and it's their turn it's your turn their turn so we can open up the match and you can see uh, the game board so let's open up on this side as well so it is their turn so it's your turn because you joined the match so now I can pick a line to go so I could say like I want to go here and then I go over here and I can see that they've gone there oh, okay I'll go here Okay, I want to go here, and I'll go here, and go here, and I can... Well, you wouldn't normally finish it off like this, but yeah, you can finish it off, and then you get your point. So I've now got one point. And obviously, the aim of the game is to, um, you know, when, when all the lines, all the possible spaces are filled, uh, to have more score than your opponent. So I'm going to um, just go through this now and just finish the game, just so you can see what it looks like at the end of the game. Okay, so we're back and you can see that um, almost all the boxes are filled in. It's just the last one now. So when we click it, the game finishes and says you won. Go back over here, you lost. So that's what you expect. Um, so then if we go back to the matches um, page, you can see that the, the battle's finished. You can still open it to have a look, but yeah, that's the end of it. So that's basically it. That's the basic functionality of the game. It's pretty simple, but you can see that it, it works. It's multiplayer. So let's... Uh, minimize this guy and then go back to full screen and, and let's start dig, uh, diving a little bit deeper to underneath the covers of how this actually all works so let's let's go down to the third and final section which is the admin section so this section admin page wouldn't be available obviously in a production app and i'm only including it here just really kind of just for demonstration purposes uh, and just showing what's going on behind the scenes a little bit more so so what do we have here well we've got a few different sections we've got events aggregates processes and projections um, if you're not familiar with event sourcing um, then I'll put some links down in the description but I will try and give you a brief explanation as we go hopefully it makes sense but um, there'll be better explanations in the comments uh, in the description so the first section is the events and this is a big giant list of every single thing that happened in the in the game so you can see the very very first event zero 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 user created and it's it was the name first <laughs> when i was testing it uh, and then they created a match and match was created a match was joined match was cancelled blah 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 so what this is basically a huge immutable list of everything that happened in the application uh, immutable means that it can't it's never changed so much like blockchain technology if you can have a huge immutable list of everything then you can replay all those events and get the current state of the world. So in blockchain, it would be like you can get somebody's bank balance, but in this, you can get um, the state of anything. You can get the state of the user, you can get the state of the match, for example. Um, it's very useful because it means that you your backend is flexible. So for whatever purposes that, that, that changes, the business requirements change. So now, you know, the rules for the game change, but the you can just process those events in a slightly different way and producing a slightly different output but the events stay the same it's, it's very useful you never lose track of a change for example so um 
what we can do with this admin interface is we can reverse it so we can see like the latest event was uh, was a match finished, which is what happened when we were playing before. Um, and we can see some various things about it. So um, aggregate is a match, which we'll get to in what that means, the ID of it and who the winner was. Um, and then we can see there's a whole bunch of turns taken as we're playing the game. Um, so other things we can do in here, we can query the uh, we can query using a durable objects query. So we can just select just one, for example, um, or we can just limit it to just a number of just a couple of uh, entries. Oops. Um, or we can offset the query from a given keeper. Yeah, makes sense. Um, so once you have this immutable record of all uh, events that have ever happened in the world, you can then, as I mentioned before, you can then collapse all those events down to a given state. So this is where projections come in. This is what a projection is. It's, it's a projection of your immutable list of events. So for example, um, there's only two projections in this particular application, but in a normal application, you could have a projection that represents a very specific part of your um, app and is obviously, um, it's designed for reading, just purely for reading. So it's obviously read optimized. So it, it looks, it structures it exactly how it needs to be rendered in the, in the client, which means you don't have any expense of queries or anything. That's why I, I really like it. So in, but in this example, we have um, just two, we have users and matches. So for example, uh, in the users, there's only, there's three users. There's first, which was the debugging user I created. And then there's me, Mikey C, uh, and then there's Righty. Um, I noticed that it didn't doesn't have the name Mike um, because we then changed the name later to be Mikey C. Um, we can do the same thing as before. We can query, we can limit, we can start from query, can reverse. Um, and then we've got matches as well. So the same sort of thing where this is a, um, a condensed version of all the events and it just represents the state of a given match. So this one must be the match that we were on, which because it's huge, it's got all the, the lines that were added, um, which represents the state of the world. So um, those are projections. So the other part is processes. Processes um, are what happens if you want something to react to an event. So when you cause an action in the client that will create a command which will execute an event but then say you want something to happen say we want to email a user well we don't actually do that immediately instead first we make an event put that into the store into the event store and then we have a process pick up that event and then it then goes through a series of, of things that happen so one of them might be uh, we email a user to say uh, match has been created here you go come and jo join it or you've forgotten your password or you know any any sort of like um, side effect that we that that would happen in the application um, in this case we've got two which is match creation and match joining they're not strictly necessary but i wanted to include them just to kick again to kick the ties and event sourcing on durable objects um, but basically um, in this case they just it limits the number of um, active matches you've got so it won't allow you to it recreate another match if you've got more than um, a certain number already active. Uh, and match joining um, is also similar to that. So the final one is aggregates. Um, I haven't actually implemented these yet because there's some nuances around what I actually want to show there. But aggregates work, um, like I mentioned before, where when the user performs an action, clicks a button, it creates a command which then gets turned into an event. To illustrate that further, I created a um, mirror, a whiteboard of um, the, the system of a high level system. So if we dive in a little bit here, we can see that um, the user sends API requests, which I've structured as RPC um, rather than REST, to a Cloudflare worker. And this is your entry point for the whole system. And it provides the API. Um, and then it dispatches commands. Well, it, it passes, um, it in turn calls RPC methods on these aggregates. And these aggregates are durable objects. So think of them as a, a class, an instance of a class that just exists in the cloud. And you just ask for that instance back and then you can call functions on it. 
Um, and then these durable objects, these aggregates, once you issue a command, say um, set name, we'll get to an example in a minute, set name, for example, um, it will then create an event name set, push that into the event store. And then the event store then lets listeners, um, which in these cases are projections and processes, lets listeners know that um, an event has been added and it, you need to handle it, you need to update your internal state. And then finally, um, the user wants to be able to get that updated state, um, so then they can just send another request, give me that updated state, and then um, it goes to a projection, and the projection comes back with the, the object. So it's it's pretty simple, but um, it's really powerful, and is, it allows you to have a lot more flexibility um, as your app develops um, to change the business requirements. So what happens if um, the business requirements change and um, our projection, we want to update our projection. Well, we can simply add a new handler for an event um, for if, if it's a new type of event. But what happens if we want to process old events in a, a new way and produce a new kind of state? Well, we can do that by um, rebuilding or rehydrating our projection. And if we flick back to the application and we go to projections, we see this action up here called rebuild. And what that's going to do is it's going to wipe the state out of this durable object, this user's durable object. It's then going to ask the event store for in batches, give me batches of events. And then it's just going to rebuild its state back up. So if we click it, you don't actually see anything happen. But what it has done there is it's rebuilt the whole state of the projection. Um, going through one by one, one by one, by one and um, reconstructed our state. So that's about it for now. Um, if you'd like to check out this project um, a little bit more in a little bit more detail, then it's all going to be up on GitHub um, by the time I publish this video. Um, so you can go through and I've read, uh, I've written a bit more about sort of the caveats and the things to do and the edge cases and other issues with this. but. Um, and you can also obviously check out the code and you can also uh, check out the example um, that we've been going through here. Um, but yeah, so it, it'll, it'll all be there um, uh, on the GitHub and I'll leave a link to this down also in the description of the video. Okay, well, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.